Good afternoon. My name is Philippe Simone, and I'm here to talk to you about creating sacred spaces. I live here in Shelburne Falls. I grew up in Boston, and I've also lived in Manhattan and Chicago. Now, regardless of wherever I've lived, I have always enjoyed very immensely watching, walking through the woods and hiking. I've always enjoyed hiking and walking around in nature. Being around the wilderness, and seeing the, the natural beauty of nature. One thing that I'm also extremely fascinated with is ancient ruins. Places of abandonment, places that are decayed, places that have been given up and now are crumbling with vegetation and wildlife overtaking it. So when I moved here and spent, started spending so much time in the woods, I decided that I would like to build something like this because I would like to share this encounter that I experience. When I come across something that's unexpected in the woods, it's a surprise and a delight and it offers another sense of beauty. So again, I decided to build some of these in myself and in the hopes that I would forget about them and then be surprised again. However, it became something a little bit more than that. It also in the process of building these things, these structures like this, <clears throat> I decided, I saw that um, the, the views and all the different things around me were coming more to my attention. That I was noticing a clump of trees here, a little opening with the view to the river, a, a rock on the ground, for instance. So I began to build these structures with the express purpose of also guiding someone's view towards some of those things. The way that I build them is quite simple. I gather the sticks in an area, and in the process of gathering sticks on the ground and other debris and anything else that's attractive that, that, that grabs me, I've cleaned up the area a little bit, opened it up and made it clear, made it easier for people to walk in. I take these sticks and uh, I put them together and um, in a quadrupod uh, formation is the latest part of my technology. Uh, I used to do things two-dimensionally. Things would fall over, and I would just have fun building them again. But I decided I wanted something more semi-permanent. So with the quadrupod, you would take your sticks interlocking, four pieces of them, so that you would have a wide side and a large opening in the front and the back. These you could cover with additional sticks and you could make all different kinds of patterns as well as a stronger structure or one that perhaps could even be a, some sort of a shelter. If you take two quadrupods and put them side by side and connect those with sticks and various crisscrossing patterns, you would have a tunnel. And those are the tunnels that I would use in order to point people's view towards a specific natural thing or towards just a really nice view. The, um, the, 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 the single quadrupod can be made into more of a bird cage or a hut. And you can combine some of these, as you saw in some of the other pictures, a whole settlement, a whole area. Sometimes the space in between two structures is a path to a certain type of view. So I built these things, and I enjoy frequently going down there and continuing the development and continuing the building, making little things, finding more materials, cleaning up more ground. And you know what? Other people love to do the same thing. In their walks with their pets, their children, their friends, they encounter these places. And then they spread the word to friends, so more people come down there. So usually when I'm working on an installation, people are coming and visiting, and sometimes even helping out and adding their little bit of artwork to it to make it even that much more beautiful. A multitude of purposes arose from all of these people coming. I'm not the only one that goes there. Some people use it to just to get away from things and to have a little bit of relaxation and recreation. Other people like to meditate. I've seen people practice dancing. I've seen poetry readings, family reunions, healing of the earth ceremonies. And I've also seen an Easter egg hunt. A family came down and planted eggs all over the place and then had their kids come later and find them. I thought that was a great use. And a local fireman 
blindfolded his daughter on her birthday, brought her down through the woods, put her in the middle of this area, took her blindfold off, and said happy birthday. And she was flabbergasted. She thought she was transported into a magical kingdom. And it's that kind of transportation that is really what these are all about. A lot of what I do here, a lot of what you see, a lot of this stuff are, did not arise from any particular plan or, or scheme or, or design. It, it arose from my instinctual reaction to being left alone in the woods to do as I please. And for me, it's quite simple. On the weekends, to escape from society, from civilization, mechanization. It allows me to have a little primitive campground, a little primitive campsite where I can just be a primitive human being, go out and gather sticks, act like a hunter-gatherer, and feel like the aborigine that I'd like being on the weekends. Some people might be at the potholes, tourists, looking down at the beautiful potholes in rustic Shelburne Falls and see some guy with no shirt on amble over the rocks and grab a bunch of sticks and then beat it back to the woods. I wonder what they're thinking sometimes. <laughs> so my purpose is pretty simple and instinctual. But one thing I found in the process of sharing the space with other people is how artists and people react to it. Artists and photographers especially. I work for Greenfield Community Television. I also produce a show called Sacred Spaces and have used film uh, to not only to show the spaces but to also photograph nature. And through that process, I now feel as though I look at nature a whole different way. And as I was saying before, the places are set up to guide a certain type of view, to create a certain type of concentrated view towards a certain natural object. So artists uh, do have a variety of things that they can do there. And mostly photographers is what I've noticed. Photographers come down and they can document the area piece by piece, get close-ups, faraway shots, um, to give me a sense of you know, what I did this year and what I'm going to do next year and how different it all looks. Another thing that they can do is to... Um, since they're having that experience of coming into the site and having their view guided in a certain direction, they can also use their photographic techniques and tools to not only document that, but to accentuate that. And that's something that actually, when I see those photographs, I, I go back to the space again, motivated to do more of something like that. So in a sense, though, although it's something that I built, it really gets shaped a lot by what other people's sense of beauty is and how other people react to it. Another thing that I thought was really interesting is how the shapes and the structures can be used to send the eye towards another natural object. A tree stump. You may walk right by it. You may look at it for hours. I, I don't usually. But when I took a couple of disks of stone, piled them up on top of one another of varying colors and, and size, people would start looking at that and then they'd start photographing that. So in some ways, the art trains people how to look at nature and how to appreciate it even more fully. One local artist, a local artist and photographer, Janice Sorensen, saw, came down, did some photographing of the space, looked at the pieces, and then a really unique thing happened that taught me a lot about what the meaning and purpose behind this is. Afterwards, she found other things in nature that were made the way nature made, makes them, but that looked similar in appearance. And then it dawned on me, it's, it's quite simple. I'm out here building this stuff. Well, what am I looking at? I'm not looking at straight lines. I'm not looking at cars. I'm not looking at buildings. I'm looking at other things in nature. So this instinctive process gets heightened and, I can, and really motivates me to, to, I hate to say the word imitate, but it, it, they definitely inspire the types of art that I build down there. So with that in mind, it really strikes me in an ideological place too. We often see ourselves above or separated or below or whatever out from nature. 
I beg to differ with that opinion. I think we are a part of nature. I think we're a part of the world, and everything that we do affects nature, and everything that nature does affects us. With that being said, I just want people to walk away, not only knowing how to create your own sacred space in your own area, and not only getting out into nature and playing with the tools that you have, your hands, and not only using and touching and feeling natural objects like sticks and stones and, and water and, and leaves and ground and air, and, and, and feeling the results of gravity as you build these, but to also teach ourselves how do we behave in nature? What's, what's an appropriate way to do that? And I see these structures because they're not taking anything away from the natural environment. They're not bringing in a huge amount of, 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 uh, of pieces. They're being made from the things that are existing right in those spots. So not only do they reflect the nature of those spots, but to me, I'd say that that's pretty environmentally friendly. The structures help us see the patterns in nature, all the different randomness. And they also teach us how do we, how do we behave in nature. Because I'd like, the one thing that I really believe is this, because I do not see people as evil or ugly or demonic or anything like that. I feel that the hand that creates these things is just as much of a natural thing as the beauty that surrounds us. Thank you very much.